Hello Internet, welcome to the Level. I'm your host, Nigel Dust, and today I just saw Spider-Man Homecoming. So, time to do a reaction video. So, again, first of all, spoiler warning, if you haven't seen it, granted it did come out today and stuff, if you haven't seen it, don't watch this. Or, if you don't mind the spoilers, go right ahead. This has been your official spoiler warning, let's dive in. So, what did I think of the Spider-Man movie that's now actually produced and stuff by Marvel? Like, the now official Spider-Man. I thought it was good. I enjoyed it. Granted, I'm a little biased. I, I really like the Marvel movies. But, looking back at the previous uh, Spider-Man movies, yes, they were good. They had memorable moments and stuff, but it's weird because... Especially the first Spider-Man movie, how that really messed with me because honestly, ever since watching that, I originally thought that Spider-Man actually, you know, shot webbing himself. That he didn't have these canisters or anything, and then as things went on, it's like, oh, 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 okay, that, that's actually how it works. He doesn't actually shoot webbing. Oh, okay. So... Now that we have an official canon Spider-Man, like the official, official one, it's nice to see that we'll have some continuity. Like, unfortunately, I don't entirely think that the, um... I'm not sure how they're going to do with the Spider-Man villains. I don't quite see Spider-Man for Marvel becoming as... ...the previous producers. Like, I don't think we're going to entirely see a Green Goblin, or a uh, Dr. Octopus, anything like that. I don't think that we're going to see those in Marvel. Like, one of the things that I liked about this, this Spider-Man movie is the fact that they used the Vulture. The Vulture and, uh, the Shocker. Two of the, uh, well, true, they're iconic to Spider-Man, but... Most people, when they think of Spider-Man villains, they think of Dr. Octopus, Green Goblin, and Venom. Those are the three that most people will probably think of. So, it was nice to see Marvel taking initiative and using someone else as the villain. And speaking of the villain, don't worry, we'll get to Spider-Man himself later. But, the villain himself. It was interesting. I... So... The villain, uh, again, is Vulture, and what he does in this movie is that he he's stealing goods so he can repurpose them into weapons. Um, he's stealing cleanup stuff from the Avengers fights and all that stuff to repurpose them as weapons and sell them on black market deals. Interesting. Granted, I don't have a lot of knowledge with the Spider-Man comics, so how this relates to Vulture in the comics, I'm not really sure. But... What I do know is I thought it was interesting how it wasn't a person being, Oh, I'm evil for evil's sakes. I am evil. Look how evil I am. Instead, it was really like a person who who felt that they had... They felt that they had to turn to this. Like, they got kicked off of their job site because the government took over them. They're not getting paid. And suddenly, they're no longer being able to, you know support their own households, so they have to turn to this. I think that's really interesting about all that. So, what they did with Vulture, how they designed him, I think, I thought that was amazing. Giving him this intense mechanical feel of a beast. Uh, one person described him as a demon, while, you know, instead of the weird goofy green suited vulture thing that you guys see in the comic books and video games things like that um with him was also the shocker uh a spider-man villain who mainly uses electricity and uh punches it at least he was in the movies i vaguely remember him from a spider-man video game but anyways i it was interesting though i thought he'd get more like a Oh, a costume or anything like that. Though the main villain was supposed to be the Vulture, so it makes sense. Uh, again, I'm not too well versed in the Spider-Man lore to know like, oh, the Shocker works for the Vulture. Other way around, they have a partnership, sometimes they do stuff. Things like that, I don't really know about that. Um, as for the conflict, 
I thought it was interesting. Unfortunately, we didn't quite see as much about Spider-Man being like, you know, oh, he's a teenager and stuff. He's four, he's 15, having to go through all the 15-year-old problems and stuff of school, because most of it was him having to ditch it to be Spider-Man. Again, I thought it was interesting, but I that that was okay. I thought it was all right. It wasn't like the main focus, and it wasn't too bad. So I honestly didn't think it was you know anything that needed to really be too emphasized. The Spider-Man conflicts, however, were definitely quite interesting. Unfortunately, what's really sad is the fact that the trailers spoiled so much of what happens and because of that I there weren't too many surprises like there was many times it was like oh yes oh this happened oh spider-man found a way to deal with it the trailers showed off the event in Washington DC with the elevator scene they showed off in the trailers the bank rot the ATM robbery. They showed off the uh, ferry, which you already see that Spider-Man tries to, and Iron Man has to come in and save the day. And you know at the end he's going to defeat the Vulture. And even then they show clips from him fighting the Vulture, so all of those times it's just suddenly everything's spoiled. That's what I hate about trailers these days, is that everything is basically spoiled by it so anyway uh the actual things itself the elevator scene i thought was really really interesting and probably the most interesting one well not to see. that one and the fairy scene honestly were the most interesting the fight with the vulture at the end honestly i didn't think it was as great as the others not to say it wasn't great on its own, just to say it wasn't as great. And what I mean by that is, honestly, the elevator scene, all I could think about was the Amazing Spider-Man you and the night Gwen Stacy died, which I, I thought is just like, could, would Marvel actually go there? Because you see, you see Spider-Man struggle to get through, also, with that, I don't know why the police and FBI and all that stuff are trying to arrest Spider-Man and all that. I... It's Spider-Man. I... I guess they're... Thinking that it's imposter or something, but still. Anyways. The scene... It, it gets really intense with the elevator scene. Always thinking, like... Yes, you, you know... The subconsciously that oh he's the hero he's going to make it but he keeps tugging at you again and again just like oh oh sh is he not actually gonna make it this time and then the same thing with the fairy how suddenly every he thinks he has everything and then suddenly it all starts going wrong and he has to repair this he has to hold together the ship pull it together and stuff you know that iconic thing from the trailers and stuff and you know he fails because Iron Man has to step in and save the day, but just how he fails and how it weighs on him. Again, spoiled by the trailer, look up the second official trailer by Marvel and you'll see it. But I still thought that in the moment that was a really intense scene of understanding heroism and the issues with it. Like, you have to understand that well, in anybody who does, like, valiant heroism, things like a firefighter, a policeman, a doctor, things like that who help in emergency situations, that they have to deal with the fact that a risky move could save a lot of people or could save a person, but it could also easily kill someone. And that if it does, they have to live with that. It's not just a, oh, it happened. Ugh. They had to live with the fact that they screwed up. And for Spider-Man, in the movie, it's a 14, 15 year old try, trying to avoid having that happen. And it's, 
it weighs on you, especially if you've ever felt like you've had to carry the weight of the world on your shoulders. It is, it is difficult. Uh, Spider-Man himself, I thought, I'm not sure what to think. Again, I wasn't, I vaguely remember the, um, original Spider-Man and kind of a bit of the Spider-Man 2. I'm not really an actor and I'm not really one to judge on acting abilities, so we can't say, oh, he was a good, good Spider-Man. He had a lot of expression. He didn't have a lot of expression. I can't really say that because, well, I'm not versed in it, but I still liked him as Spider-Man and honestly honestly I just really enjoyed the movie I not sure what to say because again I'm not really too versed in Spider-Man lore so the other thing is it's well going back and stuff it's nice that it also wasn't an origin movie you know all this all the other Spider-Mans they have to introduce like their origin and stuff all the time when uh, Peter goes out and stuff. Oh, Peter's a loser. Oh, Peter gets bit and stuff. Now Peter, man now Peter's awesome and stuff. They didn't have to do that, which I thought was really cool. Like they just sort of jumped in there. So I thought that was cool. Again, uh, I didn't think that this Peter parts were as impactful, but there was one thing that I thought was impactful: is the fact that. He subverts the cliche and he doesn't get the girl. Not a oh Gwen Stacy died, but the fact that he and Liz, his main love, don't get together. Despite the fact that oh it looks like and the love between them seems a little weird. Like, oh it's that romanticized version of the fantasy love of oh he's weird and quirky and stuff, but I love him. About and you know, from both sides of the, oh, is that weird, awkward high school thing. It still didn't feel like it was as impactful. It just felt like a, oh, he's got a crush and he really likes her. It's not like, oh, I'm absolutely head over heels for her. It's more like a, oh, I have a crush. And so, but it was impactful with the fact that he doesn't get the girl at the end. Speaking of the end, also the final fight with the Vulture. It's interesting to see how he tries to, you know, save. He saved Vulture's life and stuff. And Vulture doesn't, like, try to kill him or anything like that. Like, you know, a typical evil villain is. He just, he accepts his defeat. And it really just shows, for the villain, how... He's his own hero in a way that he feels he's forced to do this, and I, I again, I think that's really interesting. The ending parts and stuff with uh, Tony Stark and all that, and him trying to become an Avenger and stuff, I definitely thought that was interesting. It was uh, funny, especially the locked room part with uh, Spider-Man stuck in a warehouse. Him just going through learning about all the cool capabilities the suits can do, which it'll be cool if we can actually get to see that in future videos and stuff, especially, you know, like Avengers Infinity Wars and all that stuff. It'll be really cool to get to see that in future movies. <laughs> it just had a lot of good funny bits, which I think I'll leave to the movie because I cannot do those justice. But anyways, the ending ending was good I I really enjoyed the movie I think if you if you're a real big fan of Marvel movies you'll enjoy it there wasn't too many like tearjerker sides except for when Peter uh, has to deal with how he is without that super powered suit and stuff what it really means to be a hero and how he is and which you know the title of the video is if you aren't if you're nothing without the suit then you didn't deserve it in the first place. A uh, line uttered, again, by the trailers, spoiling everything. But, I still think that's interesting. For anyone who's ever felt like they had to carry the weight of the world on their shoulders, that this is something that can speak to you, that you can still make differences, make changes, find power within, and that kind of stuff. That, it's just, I enjoyed it. It's not a, 
cry tearjerker movie. It's a little, it's a heartwarming one and stuff. I'll admit that it wasn't like any uh ooze scary bits or anything like that. Nothing terrifying like oh god no how could how could this happen how is this gonna happen anything like that but it's definitely a good movie I recommend it highly um I'm not sure what else to say I'm sure other video reviewers could do it better than I can so that's gonna wrap it up for this so this is the end of my video see you around god I need to work on a new outro